In each of the last three weeks, I've taken hits to transfer in extra players. I'm Midnight Mule, this is Midnight Mule FPL, and I'm going to look at how my team's doing, how it's done in game week 10, what I'm doing for game week 11, any transfers I might be making. We'll also be looking at how my transfers have done and was it worth the hits, because I know a lot of people out there are having to consider hits for the next couple of weeks. I think it's worth it, but let's see how it goes. So we'll start by looking at the Midnight Mule FPL Mini League. Top scorer last week for game week 10 was Jacob Eriksson. Again, he's doing quite well. He got 86 points. This is how his squad lined up. And look at that midfield. De Bruyne is 6, Almiron 7, Bowen 7, Martinelli 12. Up front, Haaland 12, Kane 7. At the back, Trippier 7, Concello 18, Cucurella got 7. So <laughs> that's 9 players getting a decent return there. And he made 2 subs. In came Greenwood and Kane. Out went Isaac and Jesus. It, the players in got seven points, the players out would have got five points, but he had two free transfers, so it cost him nothing. So another excellent week by Jacob there. Top of the league is still Stephen Henderson, currently on 637 points. This is how the team lined up. They made no transfers. So Cancelo 18, Trippier 7, De Bruyne 6, Martinelli 12, Zaha 5, Haaland 12, Solanke 8. All of those got returns. That's a very good looking team indeed. I've put this here to remind me, I keep forgetting to say to people, hey, it'd be nice if you subscribe. I've currently got 142 subscribers, which I'm very grateful for. Even more grateful, this is my last video as things stands, 46 views and 10 likes. I reckon if you get 10% of likes for views, that's pretty good. So uh, five likes would have been, I'd have been happy with this. So 10 likes, 46 is good. But if you enjoy this video, Please like it, and if you're not subscribed, a subscribe would be very nice. But you don't have to. There's loads of content creators out there. This is my team for game week 10. So I had Edison for 6, Trippier 7, Cancelo 18, Martinelli 12, Zaha 5, Bowen 7, Haaland 12. They're the ones that matter. What was very frustrating for me was in real life, Perisic, James and Vardy all started on the bench. And they all came... Vardy came on with about 23 minutes left. That's fine. I'm happy for him to be on the bench. But Perisic and James came on with just a short time left. If either of those had stayed on the bench, then Billing would have come off my bench and got me the 10 points. So that was a bit of a shame, but there you go. Never mind. So I actually got 71 points, which is just inside the top million for the game week rank. Overall, I'm just inside the 1 million. I got a small green arrow. So that's okay. This is better than normal for this time of year. So I'm currently in the top 8.7%. I'm going for the top 2.5% by the end of the year. So that's all right. Happy enough with that. So FPL Game Week, this website's publicly available. You don't need to uh, pay them any money or anything. You can look at the Content Creators League. Top of the Content Creators at the moment is Ross, which is FPL Raptor. Well done him. He's <laughs> definitely worth watching his videos. He's a... Uh, He's a good chap to follow and listen to. And I guess it's random. Not random. I guess it is random, really, which content creator does well each year. There's a lot of luck and good fortune, I think. Any of them would admit that. Of course, you have to make the right choices and avoid dumb choices. But um, if somebody gets to be top year after year, then you know they're pretty good. As for me in the Content Creators League, which I'm not really in, but if you go to the website, it shows you where you would be. I would be 44th at the moment. So I'm still in front of Mate, who's someone I watch, FPL Mate. Let's talk FPL, which is Andy. He's a lot of fun, and they're both quite sad at the poor <laughs> season they're having so fun so far. But it's very funny. They both held on to Salah, I think, perhaps a little bit too long. I never had Salah because I didn't think he was worth the money. I went for Nunes. He was cheaper, and he was also bad. And then uh, also on this page is Holly. So I'm currently beating those three content creators, which is nice. How long this is going to last for, I don't know. FPL mates closed the gap to just four points now on me. So I took a hit in game week eight of minus eight points. I took out Fafana, Lavia, Luis Diaz and Darwin. And I brought in Trippier, Madison, Bowen and Mitrovic. I had two free transfers. So this cost me minus eight. But when I do transfer, especially if it's for a hit, I take a four week view. So I'm looking at a four week view here to see if it was worth the minus eight. So game week eight, the four I took out didn't get anything because they weren't playing because that's when we had strange fixtures going on. The players I brought in got 16 points. Game week 9, players I lost would have got 7. The players I brought in got 39. 
game week we just had, the players I had would have got nine points. The players I brought in got 15 points. So overall, the players I took out would have got 16 points. The players I brought in have, in fact, got 70 points. So that's a net gain of 46 points once you allow for the fact it was a minus eight. So I see all these people on Twitter, oh, shall I take a minus four? Is it worth a minus four? It's like, goodness sake, it's easy. <laughs> if you're doing a good transfer, just look at a four-week view and often it's easily worth it. Now, game week nine slightly different. I took out Odegaard and Jesus because they've got a blank coming up in 12 and I had three City and three Arsenal players. So I had to deal with it sometime anyway. And I brought in Billing and Vardy because I used to live near Leicester. I think Vardy's brilliant. And even if this was going to be a bad transfer, I wanted the fun of having Vardy in my team, especially when they're at home playing Nottingham Forest. So when I made this transfer, I said this is partly about fun. And if I lose out, I lose out. It's not a big deal. So game week nine, the two I took out got 10, the two I brought in got eight. Last week, the two I took out got nine, the two I got in got 11. So both sets got 19 points. So overall, I'm down four points on this deal at the moment. How it's going to work out, I don't know. But I'm going to keep, obviously, Vardy the next two weeks, assuming he doesn't get injured. Game week 10. So last week, got my transfers. I took out Trent and De Silva and I brought in Smith and Zaha. This cost me minus four. Trent and De Silva got one between them. Smith and Zaha got seven between them. So overall, I'm already two points up a lang for the four points I would have lost. And I've still got three weeks to go. And Trent's going to be out for a couple of those weeks. So this could be quite an interesting one as well. Game week 11, I'm not going to make any transfers. Because I don't think I need to. Let's look at my team as it lines up. So I've got Edison in goal away to Liverpool. Perisic home to Everton. Glad to see he wasn't starting tonight. Time of recording, Tottenham are playing. It gives me hope that perhaps Perisic, who's on the bench, so he's not unfit, he'll be starting against Everton. Real chance for clean sheet, maybe assist, maybe a goal. It's probably the last week I'm going to have Perisic. Or game week 12. Game week 12 would be the last week I have Perisic, probably. And then Cancelo for live away to Liverpool. James away to Villa. I hate the fact I've got this all squashed. That's so awful. Sorry about it, squashed. That was very amateur by me. don't know if you can see I've squashed it a bit. Bowen away to Southampton. Martinelli away to Leeds. Madison at home to Crystal Palace. Zaha away to Leicester, naturally. Mitrovic home to Bournemouth. Haaland away to Liverpool. And Vardy at home to Crystal Palace. Now, as things stand, it looks like James may be out for one or two weeks, so he's probably not going to play. Mitrovic, we don't know about yet. Now, I'm expecting this to be, for my team, a lowish scoring week, so I've got so many away players. But because this is quite a template team, I'm expecting most people to have a lowish scoring week, unless Haaland gets an absolute shed loads of points. I think we're probably looking at an average of somewhere between 58 and 70 points for most managers. And then my bench is Ward and then Billing, Trippier, Smith. But because James is probably going to be injured, that means Trippier is going to play, which I'm fine with. And if Billing comes on and even Smith, I'm fine with that as well. They're decent players. So there we have it. That's how the transfers I've had to pay for have gone. As you can see, in my opinion, completely worth it. So if you're fretting because you see other YouTubers and people online saying, oh, don't take a minus four, definitely don't take a minus eight. They're talking nonsense. If you make a good transfer, it's worth taking a minus 40 if you need to. All right. Thank you very much for walking. Likes and subscribes are appreciated. <laughs> Hope you have a good week 11. Thanks. Bye.